road tonight and start, as always, with a little bit of trying to get you to think about some stuff. And one of them is to ask yourself, we'll be in Philippians, it's there on the board, Philippians 10 through, chapter 4, uh, 10 through 13 tonight. But I want to ask you a question, sort of start out with is, you know, to, how do, in order to accept contentment, you know what that word is, contentment? Yes, sir. Living, enjoying, expressing, holding on to whatever you got <laughs> under what? Or regardless of? Your circumstances. The circumstances that are around you, right? Mm -hmm. But in order to accept that, you also have to accept another word that I think sometimes that we suffer from, uh, and that is wholeness. Mm -hmm. Any, anybody here tonight uh, uh, think of themselves as, as a broken person? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We do. Yep. And we really spend a lot of time thinking about, not thinking about, but we accept ourselves as being broken, don't we? Yes. Right? Either through decisions, through physical, through mental, spiritual, uh, all of our lives. I don't think any of us have a problem accepting ourselves as being broken, but in the reality of salvation, you were made whole. And that's sometimes something we really struggle with in our lives is to accept ourselves by the blood of Jesus Christ in our wholeness. Now, no, I'm not saying perfection. Some of you are like, oh, are we getting... No, 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 we're not, perf not perfect. But we are made whole in the blood of Jesus Christ. And that other part, see, if we never accept that part, if we never accept that we are made whole by Him, then how can you ever accept the fact or get to the point where you actually live your life with some level of contentment. Hmm. See, there was an airplane pilot that was flying over a small lake, and he looked down and he told the co-pilot, he said, when I was a kid, I used to fish in that lake in a rowboat. He said, now that I'm an airplane pilot, I wish I was back in that rowboat. Mm -hmm. You see, sometimes we can't be content no matter what we win, because he said, when I was a kid, I used to, I wanted to fly planes. I wanted to be a pilot when I was in that rowboat. And now that I'm a pilot, I wish I was back in the rowboat, right? Mm -hmm. Contentment is a hard thing for us to pursue. And this is not all just about contentment. It's about really accepting the fact that in order to know ourselves to be, that we accept ourselves to be incomplete. And if we find ourselves to be incomplete, then we find ourselves to be missing something, right? Isn't that why you came to Christ? An emptiness? Something you were trying to fill? Uh, a place? And see, and honestly, this is when the process of salvation, of redemption, it formed in repentance, right? can actually start to work is when you begin to realize what? Missing. I'm missing something and I've tried to fill it with what? Everything. everything. And everything I've tried to fill it with is not working right. And, and see, this is because it's, it's when, we really feel, when we really realize that we're not fully intact. Something's missing. Uh, we have a void that needs to be filled. Therefore, we are, we are people missing some parts of ourselves. And, and therefore, whether we like it or not, we have a hole, a void, whatever you want to call it, a piece of us missing from within us, uh, and, and, and like I said, you can say a hole, a void, but, you know, there, there's something there that you need, right? Uh, that completeness of life. Now, there are a couple of negative issues that form prior to this reality of what we really need to come to fruition. And, and that's due to the void. We often search for a multitude, like I said a while ago. We, we often search our lives, and some people are still searching for something to fill that void with, right? That emptiness, that fulfillment. It's like that puzzle piece. And, and I remember one Sunday we did a puzzle up here and I had everybody bring up a piece of the puzzle. It got a lot bigger than I thought it was, but it still worked out. But I kept one piece of the puzzle, right? Because the puzzle could never be full. And it was a picture of Christ, right? And, and it can never be full until that last piece was put in. The puzzle would forever. Say, so, well, 99% of it was there, except that one piece, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the same way we are in Christ. We could be 99% sure, but until we're totally sure, then we're not 100%, right? We're missing that, that void. It, it is like that puzzle piece. It's never, never complete. So in that state, however, we also remain quite vulnerable as we try to fill that void with anything and everything from relationships to habits and everything's in between. Anybody ever been there? Yeah, I think we have. Most of us have. Uh, work can fill it, right? I, I, I work a lot. I, that's, that's been my filler over the years. Fishing has been my filler over the years, right? That's my relief. I thought, why, why did I get in more trouble? Because I told somebody of that, because I used to leave McKinney on Friday night and head to the lake for Saturday. And as, as I was driving away, I left everything that I didn't want to think about in McKinney. And I went to the lake for the weekend, right? And when I came back into this, I remember going to pass through the McKinney uh, um, um, City limit. City limit sign, and I think, okay, here comes here comes Monday, and then Monday I would be a bear all day long. You know why? 
because I was missing something, but I couldn't fulfill it right. I couldn't fulfill it. It, it just wasn't there. And, and this is that, that, that happens. And, and this all, as you know, beginning, uh, our, 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 our not, I guess what I'm driving at, but our wholeness was stolen from us when in Adam and Eve, right? That's really what was taken from us, was that completeness that they had that relationship with God. They had that, that daily walk with God, personally God. It was filled. Everything was filled. Everything was good until that was removed. That was stolen from us, and it was removed. And many times we don't even realize that vulnerability until it comes too late, right? And unfortunately, that's where a lot of people are living their lives right now, isn't it? They don't even really realize that there's another level. There's something truly missing. They just, that, that certain emptiness, it, it exists. Even when, in some cases, our, our, our physical, uh, our lives physically, socially, and economically are quite full. You ever been there? You ever been totally satisfied? Is, is your, let me ask you this way. And a lot of times, is your home life good? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. Sometimes. You got a house, huh? Not too bad. Not too bad. It's good as right? it's going to get. Good as it's there's a good attitude. Good as it's going to get, right? I got a house. I got some food. I got. A, I got. I got a vehicle. I got some friends. You know, life is. See, sometimes it, it, we don't even uh, we don't even realize that there's something missing there. And there's a lot of people in that boat right now. As a matter of fact, there's millions of people in that boat because they're not even in tune to the fact that there's another part that's missing, a completeness, a whole. Huh? Satan wants them that way. Too. Absolutely, because if he can just keep it good, right? I mean, it's bad. Man. Tomorrow, you know? Oh, here's a little good. I mean, I'm just saying, and I'm going to tell you, there's a, there's a pro and a con to Mr. Trump becoming president today because there's a whole lot of people who are seeing the negativity, and now here comes that hurrah, and it's a prosperity hurrah of physical gain, and, and it's going to be good in America again, and we hope that it is, but there'll still be, a, it'll be somewhat of a pacifier for the true need of a real God in their life, right? Amen. See, it's a, it's a two-edged sword, right? Mm -hmm. it's, a bit, it's a bit like that. So, it is, right? I mean, just when we think we can't take anymore, and then, whoo, oh, 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 man, life is good again, and things are well again, and, 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 and we sometimes walk away and we forget who our God is at that point, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we go through the valley and we get on the mountain, and then there's all those bumper stickers, well, you wouldn't know the valley unless you're on the mountain, you wouldn't know the mountain if you wasn't in the valley. You know? <laughs> well, you know, and a lot of times we just flat walk away from God and we forget he was even there to get us through either one of them, right? So, uh, you know, but that's the thing I just wanted you to think about tonight, that the experience is because the key element that's missing is a relationship with Jesus Christ. Y'all know that. I'm preaching to the choir tonight as always. Therefore, we're missing the, the wholeness of God. And I said that when we started. You were made whole through the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Again, were you made perfect? No. no. You'll get there. You'll get there, right? Now, our efforts is to, is to try to be, I don't say to be, try to be perfect, but our effort is to try to live like Christ as much as possible, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's detailed throughout the body, to have patience and control and not, and not be angry and, and not covet and all those good things that he told us. Here's how you live as a Christian. But the bottom line is to accept our wholeness is the opportunity also to understand that you can set up your contentment because you're in Christ, right? You're in God at that point. Now, again, don't mix it up. I, I, the perfection, I got it. God, uh, 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 we're not perfect, but we're trying. But the part I really want you to think about is that you were made whole, and you can achieve this by the salvation that you accepted. We're made whole by the blood of Jesus Christ, and therefore we're made complete at the point of salvation. Right? You say, well, no, I'm still broken, Tim. I got all these issues I'm dealing with. Yeah, but you're made whole. You're covered in the blood of Jesus. It's, it is like yeah. it's that arms, right? It's that coverage. It's that, and the deal is accepting that so that I can have some contentment in my life because I realize who my father is and who has their arms around me, right? That's that part I want to drive to you. Now, the, the void that was missing was filled, which we, we should lead a very, uh, excuse, which should lead to a very interesting development, fulfillment in life regardless of my circumstances, right? Fulfillment in life regardless of my circumstances, like we started well, we started out with. I can deal with what I got good, bad, or indifferent, because I know who my Father God is. And that's the only reason I can deal with what I got, because I know who my Father God is, right? Because the rest of it is, anybody got an answer for everything going on in their life right now? I don't. I really don't. But the more I realize that, then the more I realize that I have a Father God that does, right? So tonight, if you would, uh, in Philippians 4, 10-13, uh, consider Paul speaking to the, 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 the people of, of Philippi, and, and, and Paul states two very key statements in relationship to what I'm speaking to tonight. In first in chapter, in verse 11, and then in verse 13. But we'll work our way through these three verses real quick. And, and listen as we hear it says, "I rejoice greatly in the Lord." And I and I've kind of added some words to mine, so just just to kind of 
add some definition to it. So um, you, you, it may not speak exactly as your, your, your version is, but it's for a purpose. Uh, I, I recently, I, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that now at last you care for me has flourished again, though you, you, you surely did care, you lacked opportunity to show it. And again, he was talking to the people of, of Philippi. And it says, not that I speak from, and I'm adding this part in, any personal need, for I have learned to be content. And note this, now here's the contentment, right? Here's this wholeness. I've, I've learned to be content, self-sufficient in Christ. It's critical to understand that part. The contentment comes from self-fulfillment in Jesus Christ. If you're reading along with me, like I said, it reads a little bit different, but I wanted to expand that. It, to satisfy the point that where I'm not disturbed or uneasy regardless of my circumstances. So if you look at it textual from the text, it says, let me find it right quick. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you care for me and has your care for me has flourished for me, uh, though you surely did care, you but lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Right? See, that's that sufficiency of Christ. I am sufficient in Christ. And he's going to go on to say this in verse 13. But that's what he was referring to. I'm satisfied to the point where I'm not disturbed or uneasy, regardless of my circumstances. I got you giggling over there. Well, you, 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 you read that, and then you think about who's writing that mm -hmm. and what he's been through. Now, at this point, he's been cut off by the Romans. He's in the yeah. Roman God. He's writing it, right? Yeah. So, again, he's isolated. Right? But still. Look what he's gone through. And he says, oh, yeah, I'm content, man. I'm good. I'm, I'm, but again, content how? Well, in yeah. Christ. In Christ. Right. right. In my in, in, in that in, in that wholeness. Again, that wholeness. See, sometimes we say, I'm an old sinner saved by grace. Are you an old sinner saved by grace? You're a new sinner. Huh? Every day. You're a new sinner. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's make a list. Every day. <laughs> Let's make a list of these new... Oh, you're a new sinner. Oh, not new sins, just new sinner. Okay, I'm sorry. I was having way too much fun with that. But no, see, the, the, the fact of it is, that's how the, that's that wholeness that comes around us. That See, you are an old sinner saved by grace. You are an old sinner saved by Christ. But once you're saved, you're saved. And what I'm trying to say is, sometimes we spend a lot of time and energy, and I've said this before, we spend a lot of time and energy looking at our, our, our issues that have been covered, right, and not accepting the wholeness of the forgiveness, right? I am made whole by the sufficient, the, 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 the blood of Jesus Christ, right? Yeah. Therefore, I can live in my life and say, my gosh, I made this mistake and I made it again. Oh, and I'm, oh I made it again. And then I went about and I made it again. And I made it, and I asked, but I forgot, forget. And I'm made, I'm made, I'm whole. I wasn't made whole. I am whole in the fact that I was forgiven my sins at the time of salvation, right? I, I made wholeness. So he said here, I'm satisfied to the point where I'm not disturbed easy or, uh, or uneasy regardless of my circumstance. Now this is a huge statement in, in, in recognition of the wholeness made available through the blood of Jesus Christ. For this is a state I can pers persevere to endure, right? What's my circumstance? Anybody got the same home life in here? No. Anybody got the same family in here? Similar, but anybody got the same issues? What is it? You got the same family in here? Right? You got the same issues in here too, right? Right? I mean, a lot of the things we anybody dealing with illness? Yeah. So we got we got likenesses but differences. But the bottom line is in all of this, I can preserve how can you hold your head up and, and continue to deal with life as it comes to you straight up sober because of the power I'm given by Jesus Christ. The, 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 I'm self-sufficient in Christ that, that, that the way that he allows me that the, the, by the ability given to me by Christ Jesus so look at verse 12 it says I know how to get along well let me read the text and then I'll, I'll mess with it a little bit here so verse 12 says I know how to be abased a, a and I know how to be abound everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and, and to suffer need so Paul says what I've covered it right and we know when we go through that uh, section where he gives out the list of things of, of the times he'd been shipwrecked and, 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 and beaten, stone, and left in the eat. ocean, left at sea, hungry, left, left, left alone, right? Paul says at the same time, this is really I mean, coming from Paul is a great thing because he said, look at all I've been through and yet I'm still whole in the blood of Jesus Christ in my salvation. See, in verse 12, in a little different twist, it says, I know how to get along and live humbly in all times, especially 
And here's that key word, the difficult ones, right? And I was thinking of that because anybody can praise God what? When, the same, they're good. when, everything's good. when you're feeling good, it's easy to be a good Christian, isn't it? Yeah. It's easy to feel good about everything in your life when, whenever we got that one good day, right? Like this afternoon, anybody enjoy this afternoon? I was working, but I, I know somebody had to enjoy this afternoon. It was a beautiful <laughs> afternoon, right? Yeah, I sat outside. You said I'll see what I mean. It was I mean yesterday evening after the did anybody notice uh, Miss Joe noticed a few when the storm cleared yesterday, right? Yeah. I mean, even though it hadn't rained, but we've been waiting for rain forever, and then as soon as it cleared, it was like it was just a wonderful, wonderful, like a, a softness in the air, right? A, a coolness, the sun came out. It was just it was just a wonderful evening, right? Um that that's that that's that good time. Yeah, the, I looked out the shop. What is it back there? The ground had been washed. And the ground got washed heavily. Yeah. <laughs> and it's getting going to get worse some more, but but that, but that see that wholeness that we have, the wholeness made available to us by the changing power of Jesus Christ is the one that implemented for the times when we do not have the answer, right? And we talked about this uh, uh, we talked about this last night in the men's group about Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of the church, and we talked about who's the church. <laughs> you are right. So when when you think about it, where where are you standing? You're standing on the cornerstone who is Jesus Christ in your life. And we are that. We talked about it last night being, being the witness and the temple. You are the temple, the witness of Christ, right? Where he wishes to dwell. And again, that's where that, 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 uh, that opportunity is to understand that in those times when it's not so good, when things aren't so well, that time of uncertainty, that time of insecurity, that we have the opportunity to stand in contentment. Why? Because we understand it? No. Because we like it? No. No. But we can deal with it because of the blood of Jesus Christ that covers me, mm -hmm. that makes me whole. Right? Mm -hmm. Even though if you put a if you put a light up to me, it would like there would be light beams going all the way through me because I'm cracked in every way. Right? <laughs> every shape, form, emotionally, physically, it's all been broken at one time or the other. It's glued back together like a china cup. Right? There's a few pieces missing. Or my favorite one is it's like a coffee machine with no toner. There's a bright light, but nothing ever comes out. Right? <laughs> That's how I feel sometimes, right? There's just nothing on the paper. It's blank. But the fact of the matter, uh, and, or, or, and a good example of that is, is I was thinking about last Sunday where we talked about King Joseph and the people of Jews as they approached the massive army waiting to, to annihilate him, right? That's what we studied Sunday morning, right, and Sunday night. They were, they were coming not for cookies and tea, but they were coming to annihilate uh, the uh, King, King Joseph and the, and the people of Judea. And instead of panicking, the king and his army was doing what? They prayed. Singing and praying. They had a church service, right? He had a consultant with his men. He got, he got some singers, and, the, and they were leading in front, praising God. Praising God for what? The victory to come? Just yes. <laughs> but more importantly, they were praising God because God was already in front of them. Yeah. See, there was a certain wholeness in there, even though they were facing the fact that, look at what's coming at me. Look at these three armies about to, to that's coming down on me, and yet we're worshiping God at that point, right? I don't know if that was Brother Clevenger was that. No, no, that no. was Clevenger back there. I know it was. I don't my phone in the church. It, so th there's an example of, of that very essence that we have from the Bible itself, and where where they were actually, and that's and that's the way that you you know say how how do I live this way? Change your life and live that way, right? Because see, again, first you have to accept the wholeness to understand the contentment. They were in the kind of one if mentality, wasn't it? They were at one point. Well, you know, they, yep. We're going to pray to you, whatever happens, happens, right? It, it was, well, it was pretty much at that point they had to, right? Because well, he told me, he said, you go. Me. So yeah. they wasn't in the city anymore, right? right. They, they were, uh, I don't remember the name of the, the valley they were headed for, but they were they were headed to them, right? <laughs> so there, there's an example of, of how God uh, gave them a promise, which was the battle was mine. That's what he said in the scripture, right? Mm -hmm. So well, what am I driving at tonight? To have that contentment in your life, first of all, you've got to understand the wholeness that's given to you by Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That I am complete. Mm -hmm. No, I'm all broken, Tim. No, no, you're not in the hands of Christ. You're made sufficient. You can deal with what he gives you. And I'm not going to get bumper sticker cliche, but I'm just saying, this is that wholeness. And in order to have that, you, that is the only way that you'll ever have contentment. Because if not, you're constantly going to be looking for the missing piece, right? Mm -hmm. The missing piece was supplied. Huh? The Holy Spirit is what fuels us. Holy Spirit fills us with that, absolutely. So, and, and, so as they uh, look at verse 12, let, let me continue verse 12. It's, uh, in, my, in my exploded version, if you will. Verse 12, can you say, I know how to get along and live humbly. I also know how to enjoy abundance and live in prosperity. 
in any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing life straight up and straight on. Mm -hmm. If you show me anybody in today's world that's dealing with life straight up and straight on, I'm going to tell you, I hope they're a Christian, mm -hmm. right? Because I don't think you can unless you have the strength of God in you. Right. I tried it. Mm -hmm. Right? Anybody else try to deal life? Yeah. I've tried to deal life. I, I failed at it miserably. Me I mean, I, I crushed it. I, was, I, I, I excelled at failure until I met Jesus Christ, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the things that I was trying to excel at doesn't matter, mm -hmm. right? So that's the beautiful part. It came back to who he was. So it says, I've learned the secret of facing life straight up and straight on. Whether I'm well... Uh, uh, whether I'm going hungry, whether I have abundance, or, or where I'm being in need, you have the wholeness of Paul's statement because under, understand he understood how salvation worked, that he was no longer in, incompetent, right? The things that we accept in our humanism, the things that we are incompetent, God makes complete in him. It's a wholeness. It, it's a fulfillment. In verse 13, he really wraps this up really good. He says, I can do all things. Here we go now. How? Who Christ, who strengthens me. Mm -hmm. See the beautifulness of that short twist right there. I can do it. I can do anything, right? Cape on my back, clothes pin on my throat. I'm Superman, as long as I'm in my God, right? Mm -hmm. Right. There's the thing which Christ has called me to do through Him who strengthens and empowers me to do His purpose. See, Paul does not state. I'm, uh, Paul does not state I made. Uh, I'm a, I made hope of what I have or what I can do in my own ability. Paul states I am self sufficient in the efficiency of Christ, right? I'm ready for anything life can bring to me through him who provides me a super, a spiritual inner strength. That's the, that's the concept, and not the concept, that's the reality. A strength that provides confidence of Christ that brings forth peace. And that's really the last part I wanted to drive at. You can't get to contentment and you can't find peace in your life until you accept the wholeness that Christ has given to you, mm -hmm. Right? That, that, that overlay and shadow, or not overlay, but that overlay that says, I have, I have taken all the cracks and I have filled them with me, right? All the broken parts that are missing, now they shine for me, right? And we also know the more broken the person, often the greater the light shines, right? The greater the wholeness. We see we can't count ourselves at peace unless we know ourselves to be content in relationships. So if you say, man, I wish I could just get a little peace, well, it's there, but you have to accept what he gives to you, right? right? And also realize that, as he tells us, we can't find it in the world either. It means whether we achieve the things of this world that doesn't impact or our reality, what we were made whole in the power of the Almighty God, right? My void is filled regardless of my circumstances, and in that reality, it's not a concept or a theory. It's a fact made available to us by Christ who can live, we can live in peace and contentment if we, here's that part, if we choose to. So if I'm going to accept my salvation, then I need to accept that all the pieces were put back. You say, well, no, I'm missing, I'm, I'm, I'm talking figuratively, I'm missing a leg, a couple of toes, I've got a, a, a droopy ear and a weak eye, but in the power of God, I am made whole. Mm -hmm. Right? I, I, that, that, that's the wholeness. Now, quickly, I want to share a few how-tos, because I love the how-to part, not just the talk part. So let's think about this. To grow in our contentment of Christ real quickly, not, not um, uh, and, and our wholeness, but, but especially our contentment, think about these things in the world. Uh, think about these steps, excuse me. Be in the world, y'all know this one, right? Mm -hmm. not the but not of the world, right? Be in the world, live in it, but don't be persuaded by it, right? There's where that temptation comes in. Don't covet. Hmm? Love, it, lo love your life, it's just given to you. And then we talked about this Sunday, do, do you love your life? Or are you just living your life? Because they're two different things, right? You say, Tim, you're getting you're getting philosophical and 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 and, and squid. No, I'm just telling you. At some point, you got to realize this is my life. Mm -hmm. And I know for many many years I spent my life waiting, trying to get to what the next thing, right? Mm -hmm. At some point, you got to accept the fact, really, regardless of age, health, whatever. This is my life right now, and it, it's 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 good in what it is right here, right? Because we know it may not get better tomorrow, or it may be hum it may be awesome tomorrow. But the bottom line is, all I get is this right here, right? It's, it's that part. So uh, uh, live your life at this point. Uh, don't covet. Love your life as you're living it. Don't idolize anything other than God. Mm -hmm. Put God first. I, I mean, I'm, I'm just telling you, put God first. Don't compare yourself to others. Total, absolute waste <coughs> of time, right? I've told you this many times. You want to compare yourself to me? 
yeah, yeah, you might win, but you won't win. You won't. I, I just, it's just not that high a bar to climb over, right? Totally and absolutely wish. Enjoy your individual and God has given to you in your ministry, in your way. You say, well, Brother Tim, well, I don't have a ministry. If you've accepted Christ, you have a ministry. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sorry, you have one. It's you. It's you. And everywhere as you go, you're taking Jesus with you. And, and, and that's that's the whole deal. Don't no, I don't have a ministry. You absolutely have a ministry. Don't judge others. This kind of goes back to that. Don't compare yourself to others. Don't judge others. Don't judge others' involvement or lack thereof in the work of their ministry or, or in their life. Do your life. Do your ministry. Do your worship. This is the hardest thing to do in the world is to keep your eyes on you. Anybody else struggle with wondering over looking at other people? Oh, don't everybody raise your hand at the same time. <laughs> Come on, we're human. We all do it, right? I mean, it's like the horse blinds. You know what I mean? When they raced, they did that for a reason because they wanted them looking down the track, not at the other horses. That was the whole purpose of the blinds. And we need to be like that a lot. We need to be looking at the cross and doing what God came to me and said, this is what you need to do. This is what my ministry is, right? And enjoy that individual that God, the individualism that God has given to you. Don't judge others. Don't, don't, it's just, we know that this, it doesn't work out, right? Judge yourself. If you want to judge yourself, judge yourself in the mirror of Christ. You know what the mirror of Christ is? It takes away all of the, all of the, the impurities or whatever, imperfection when you look at it through Christ. Yeah, and where is it? You want to compare yourself, get this out, start reading it, and see how you do. Right? Right? That, that's the mirror right there. You don't, you don't, 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 well, I'm better than Tim. I'm going to tell you that, that that don't take much. Right? It just doesn't. Better than Joe. That doesn't. That's right? yeah. I'm judging and criticizing at the same time. That no. <laughs> see, they're, 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 we're, we're, deal with you. That's what he told us, right? Deal with you. Uh, Matthew 6, uh, 24 through 31, at the very end he says, deal with you because tomorrow is enough trouble as it's coming. Yeah. Just just deal with you, right? right. Uh, six, uh, big one, don't expect everything. And I think this is one I tried to get into a few weeks ago. I still don't think I really fleshed it out well for y'all. But what I'm saying is many times we get frustrated with, with God. We do. And you know why? And I think we did talk about this a couple, maybe it was last, I think I, last Wednesday night I asked y'all this question. But, you know, uh, we, we do, I think sometimes we do get very much upset with God because we put our expectations on God's re results in our lives, right? We, we, we say this, this is what my expectations are, and when it doesn't work out, the first thing we do is what? Blame God. We blame God. God loses every time. Why? Well, one thing, we don't really understand God or we're applying things to him that maybe, maybe our expectations to how we think that he should handle a certain situation. And I know that's true because I know I've been put in similar situations and I put other people in similar situations when I go to them and say, well, this, when we talked about this, this is what, I would do it this way, Joe. And Joe went, to, he did it totally this way. Well, I never would have done it that way. See, my expectations were totally different. And right? the time frame, too. Awesome. Time frame, oh, ability, right. skill. All of, but with, when we're dealing with God, I think we do get fr frustrated. And I'm not trying to be pessimistic, but I, I do think we get we get negative with Him because we apply what this is what I, I this is what I think you should do. My opinion, my opinion is we, we don't like Sunday. We don't ask permission. We just expect results, right? We're Americans. <laughs> get it done now, instantly, and I need it here, right? Don't expect everything. Pray to God with an open heart that, hey, Father God, here's my issue. I need a resolution. <laughs> But if you go to God with a predetermined resolution more than time, nine times out of ten, you're going to walk away disappointed because he's not going to answer it the way that you think he does or should. And that can be frustrating. Glorify God for everything in your life. Listen to that one. Glorify God for everything in your life. Not just the good. For all circumstances. The good and the bad and the ugly. The first thing I prayed last night was thank you, Father God. Why? Because so many times we ask for things but we very rarely ever go back and say thank you, God. And here's the deal. Even if he doesn't answer it, he was at least listening. I mean, we can't, we just can't wrap our minds on who God is, right? That he that he would do this for us and give us this opportunity of life. That they're the good and the bad and the ugly. Glorify God in all circumstances. Thank God. Just ask God, right? Be grateful for being heard as well as, as when you are answered and even when you're not. And ten, if you're if you're saved then you have a ministry. And I touched on this just a minute ago. You do have a ministry, which means you already have been called. Be faithful to your ministry. And don't, don't let someone else take you out of your ministry comparing yourself to why they don't or why they should. 
If you really feel that's the ministry you're in, go do your ministry, right? Don't, don't let, because he's not going to put everybody in the same peg and hole, right? That's why we're all different, and that's why we come in contact with different people. And different. I'm never going to talk to the people that Joe Huff talks to because he talks to helicopter people. <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> Wouldn't even know what to say with them. Don't fall. <laughs> you got a parachute. I'd sell parachutes to them. Here you go. Here's a parachute. Ain't high enough to jump. Too low to... Too, I mean, it's a tough deal, right? But no, I'm just saying, you're, you're all involved. Some of you ride motorcycles. Some of you fish. Some of you do uh, quilting. Some of you... I mean, there's a bright work in different places. Uh, all kinds of things. Different jobs. You, you're, you have a ministry to God to witness God. Don't let somebody else take that away from you. And here's another one. If, if you call your ministry a task, a chore, or a burden... You might want to check. It's not a ministry. Well, I don't want to do that. Well, then you ought not to. Because if the heart's not in it, then guess what? It's a waste of time. Right? It's supposed to be for the, for the purpose of your relationship and your ministry with God. And finally tonight, we discussed this as passion. Have some patience. Have some patience. And I'm not talking about with others. Have some patience with yourself. My goodness, we keep a load on us all the time of what we should get done, how we should get it done, how good it should be done. And if you don't, Miss Joe will get on you and she'll get you going too. <laughs> right? Have some patience. This is a God thing, folks. Long after we're gone, hopefully there will be another generation of people that have come along and because of the efforts of this group of people, there will be some more Christians here listening to some goober hit preacher trying to tell them about Christ, right? I mean, that's the concept. If he doesn't come back, we're passing this torch on over and over again. It's definitely a walk. It's not a run. And have some patience, right? Now this is, again, that's that, that, there's, there's a good example of that demand, right? Well, God ought to come back. Well, I would like for him to, too. But I'm going to get disappointed if he doesn't, right? So the main line is, I'm just going to keep paddling my little boat down the stream until he calls me home or he comes back, right? So again, in that, just have some patience. Sunday we touched on it in closing and that. He told King Jehoshaphat and a group of people, stand still, mm -hmm. right? Stand still. And, and as I shared with you, that means the mouth. That means oftentimes also shutting the mind off. Quit trying to figure out how it ought this. Oh, we see that. He, let it go. Let God, right? God doesn't speak through noise and he doesn't speak through chaos. So if you're hearing either one of those, understand you're not talking to God. Because he doesn't develop that way. It, 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 uncertainty is not an encouragement from Christ. He's not going to bring you 47,000 answers or 47,000 options to a, to a situation. So in those things, think about the how-tos of how to come back and accept, first of all, accepting I am made whole in Christ because of Christ. Not in my perfection, but because of my salvation. And in that, I can find contentment because I know who my God is, right? The key, realizing you've been made whole in Christ through him and regardless of our humanism, which I always think about it as our ability to want to control, all things are possible through him. you got an issue, God can handle it. But you have to have the faith to believe that you can move that mountain, right? Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Thank you all tonight. A little calmer, right? Anything else in closing tonight? All right, thank you for being here. Don't forget Sunday morning and hoo-hoo, business meeting Sunday night. And Thanksgiving's almost here. <laughs>